A up there. If you watched the previous video, which was a bit of a slavering mess, I did mention that we would put in a chicken run. That's what's behind me. So that's what we're going to be taking a look at in this video. So looking at it from above, we've got approximately 25 meters of run. Maybe it's more actually with chicken mesh all the way around this side and weld mesh, two inch weld mesh around this side. An 8x6 coop, which I converted from an 8x6 shed that we had around the back. And we've put some nice fancy shingles on because when we look from the house, we can see the roof. Now we haven't quite finished the path going around here. I need some more sleepers, which are very difficult to get a hold of. But I've put some steps in using some spare 6x2 that I had. And that's all been creosoded. So that goes down. And along here, we've got a sleeper wall. And all of those are like proper sleepers, not the modern crap ones that don't last five minutes. Everything has been creosoded. And as far as the posts go, they were actually stood in a big vat of creosote to get the bottom two foot creosoted. Uh, and you know, get it really soaked in and then they were put in and all the rest of it was creosoted. So we've got three doors to get in. We've got one here, we've got one right at the far end and we've got one behind the shed. And they can be accessed from both sides. So I've put a little hole in here. We've got a bolt on the inside and we've also got a key catch on the top there. So let's go in and take a look. Unfortunately, some of the creosote is still a bit wet. <laughs> Every time I come in, I get creosote on me. Uh, right, you can see that they've been getting a lot of greens. And that's because there was quite a lot of the things that I've got planted in the garden went to seed. We've got plenty of other things to eat, so I just chucked them in for the chickens. There you go, that's a sleeper wall. We've got two by twos coming up off the back and we've got weld mesh all the way along that side. The run is approximately oh, five foot nine tall. It's the best part of six foot. And as we go along here, you'll see that we've got the mains water supply coming into a little drinker here. So as that gets emptied, it automatically fills up. I'll just test that. There you go. So it fills up immediately. And then turns off as soon as it gets to a certain level. It looks like there's some sort of cow war gonna go on there because we've got cows in here and cows in that field separated by a fence <laughs> and really the layout of this isn't finished yet I want to put more things in here like little log piles maybe pallets for them to get under uh, you know like a little lean-to roof here for them to shelter if they didn't want to go in there you know put perches on there as well or something just to give them a little bit more interest this is really the first week that we've had the hens um, uh, what else? Yep, we've covered that. That's, yeah, we've planted four fruit trees in here as well. So in time, they'll come up. They're kind of dwarf and fruit, fruit trees. So they'll be dropping all sorts out and incorporated into the run is a big silver birch tree. So there's all sorts dropping off there all the time to help to feed them. All the way along the outside has been planted with wildflower seed and all sorts of other seed so in time that'll come up and again it'll attract insects which will come through into here and it'll help to feed the hens with a really natural diet and here I've got a spare wheelie bin which has been sunk into the ground and I just use that to store a bit of the corn and some of the bedding and this is the shed might as well start from the outside. This is the, the hatch that I've made. And it's just got a bit of string there. And that just allows me to raise and lower that. Pin it up there. Like so. Are you ladies going to stay in there or are you coming out? 
the size of these beasts, man. She is absolutely massive. She's definitely the boss. Big mama. Okay, so because the first lot of hens I got didn't want to jump up onto this perch, I put a ladder up there. And since I put the ladder up, they're all using it. The floor has got vinyl on it. I had a big spare lump of vinyl that I'd had for the last two or three years for such an occasion. And this ladder can just be lifted off if I wanted to totally clean the floor out. And on the opposite side, we've got the nest boxes. Now there's four boxes there. And is there any eggs? No. Hey, there we go. There's three eggs in that one. They all seem to use that one or that one. I don't think there's ever been eggs in this one and this one. Now because I needed somewhere to put all the gear, I built a really strong shelf along here, which is, oh, I don't know, four foot odd high. I didn't think the hens would be able to jump up that far, but they can, especially from here. So the first night that I put this up, two of them roosted up here. So consequently, I've just put this bit of pond liner up just to stop them from roosting up there. If I want to get to the stuff underneath, I just lift that up tuck it under there and I can help myself to the feed and medications and whatever else there is up there. And then underneath the shelf I've got a little spade hanging which I use to clean the place out in the morning and then we've got a, a water container like a, a drinker that's hanging up approximately six inches off the floor just to stop any muck getting kicked into it and then we've got a little feeder. I think I might put the type that opens up when the step on it in here just to stop any rats getting in because they may find this in time and the likes of the platform underneath the perches is sectional it's got one half and then it's got another half so that can just be slid out and cleaned it's quite a versatile system oh I should maybe mention the light as well now this is a little light that I got from eBay no sorry it wasn't eBay it was Amazon I'll put the link to it in the video description and that is solar powered so outside just facing the Sun on the outside of the shed there's a little solar panel and it constantly charges a battery in here and that allows you to have a light on a night and in either side of the shed, so on the back of the shed and also on the front of the door, I've got a vent. That just allows it never to get too feisty and it just allows airflow to come through here on a night or whenever the doors are shut. So that's the little solar panel that supplies the light. And on the back, that's what the vent looks like from outside. So it's pretty smart. Again, I think I got those on Amazon and they were quite cheap. If I can find the link, I'll put it in the video description. As you can see, the shed sits on a 4x2 base, which is leveled up and held in by 2x2 two two pegs. The floor of the shed is then screwed to that and then the shed itself is screwed to the base. So this isn't going anywhere. I'll just, I'll just give you a close-up of those felt shingles because they're, they're quite nice. And because the felt shingles are pretty thick, they will handle little branches and so on dropping on here, dropping onto the roof. What I didn't want is ordinary felt and it to be getting branches raining down on it because it would result in punctures. Hopefully I won't get any punctures in the roof. So you've met the five hens that I got from one person. These are the other three hens that I got from somebody else. And unfortunately, the ones behind me, I've had them in probably the best part of a week now, and they're still a little bit flighty. I don't think that they got as much human contact where they came from as the other five. I mean, I walk in here now, and generally, the five just come straight up to me, wanting food or just to say hello. These ones are a little bit more wary, a little bit more scared. 
hopefully they will come round in time. They're certainly eating well and they're laying eggs every day. So they must be happy enough, they're just a little bit antisocial. So there you go, that's why you haven't seen me making any videos for probably the best part of two months. Because I work from home and when I get a spare half hour or an hour or time at night, I've been down here digging holes, sawing wood, screwing things together, converting sheds and creating what you see behind me here. Already it's been a good investment, although that investment was quite heavy because all the sleepers, I think there was 20 of them maybe, were pretty expensive. Actually there must have been more than 20. No, there was 20. And they were about 50% more cost than what they would have been this time last year. Luckily, as far as everything else in the garden goes, I got that in prior to 2020. Since then, the prices have just been going up and up and up. I should have got this in, in or before 2020. I didn't because all the ground needed to be leveled and all that, and it took a while. But as you can see, it's come together quite well. Now, I think the next video I'll make will be on the greenhouse, which is behind me here, because it's, what, mid, mid May now? and i've got some really good looking tomato plants chilies peppers and there's also a little bit of hydroponic stuff going on in there as well so that's what we'll be looking at next time thanks for watching and i'm gonna go now and collect those eggs possibly have one or two for my dinner see you next time